Police say officers were patrolling a neighborhood near 7th and Manchester around 8 p.m. last night when they heard gunshots. They found a man lying on the ground. He was rushed to the hospital where he later According to the L.A. Times, the victim is rapper Slim 400. 34-year-old Slim 400 was making a name for himself in the California hip-hop scene. The rapper, whose real name is Vincent Corrin, was gunned down in the driveway of a house on 7th Avenue in Inglewood last night. A man and a woman have been arrested and charged in the slaying of rapper Vincent Corrin, known by the stage name Slim 400. Michael Terry charged with and being a felon in possession of a firearm, while Tamra Bell is charged with being an accessory after the fact. He was, he was a great human being. Uh, L.A. lost another prolific artist, you know? Nipsey was one, Tupac, and now Slim. June 28th, 2019. The Compton rapper Vincent Caron, a.k.a. Slim 400, decided to take a trip back to his hometown in Compton in order to enjoy time with his family before having to travel to perform at a show. Assuming, given this was the place where he grew up, he would be safe and no one would do him harm, he lingered along without any worry of his surroundings. That decision nearly cost him his life. I'm looking, like I said, just to pull up, holler at my camp folks, Within the, within the neighborhood I grew up in, not thinking like anything negative gonna happen. Yeah, this is where but, you, this um, your soil. Yeah, yeah, and I was wrong. While in his vehicle with two other friends, another vehicle was already lying in wait for his exit. Slim 400 would do just that. And at that moment, his assailants began firing bullets into Slim 400, sending him into a rush to try to get inside the house of his family. I was already on the block waiting for anybody to pull up to do whatever they was gonna do, but I was the one they caught. So, as I'm walking, they already about to get the popping. So once I hear shots, shit, I'll get to trying to run, duck, get behind cars to get to my folks, like garage and house. I guess these dudes was already on the block waiting for anybody to pull up to do whatever they was gonna do, but I was the one they caught. So, as I'm walking, they already about to get the popping. Once I hear shots, shit, I'll get to trying to run, duck, get behind cars to get to my folks, like garage and house. Injured from gunfire, Slim 400 would collapse to the floor as he saw his life flash before his eyes, envisioning everyone he loved, most importantly, his daughter. Feeling at the end of his rope, Slim 400 would give in, thinking this was the moment his life was lost. However, that wasn't meant to be his fate then. A family member rushed out even while bullets were firing and dragged Slim 400 inside as others joined trying to keep him awake. It was her bravery that saved the rapper's life. The first person I thought of when the shots got the ring and this I remind you, I'm trying to get it. But in my mind, I'm like, damn, my daughter, you feel what I'm saying? Like. Taking nine bullets about his body, Slim 400 was hanging on for his life. But against all odds, he survived the attack of his assailants. Yeah, they shot me nine times, bro. So you nine times, you yeah. wow, man. Straight up. And you still here, man. Yes, that that means you got purpose. That that <laughs> it wasn't an easy road. Slim first had to recover through the injuries that tore bullet holes about his body. I feel like in my my, my upper back, my shoulder. Right. Um, I probably got like three shells. In my front stomach. Wow. I have to, to split my stomach. So uh -huh. I still got staples right now in my stomach. Right. Um, I got hit in my ear. You see this right here? Oh, wow. That's why I got the bandana. I can't even hear out this. Oh, wow. So I'm, 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 I'm hearing out of this one. Right, right. So then I got hit in my jaw. Wow. I still got the shell right here. It's still in there. Right here. So it's crazy. Images would soon reveal the fight on his hands as he posted a picture of himself online while in the hospital. But his will was strong and his heart fierce. Included with the pictures was the caption thanking the medical personnel for saving his life and went a step further to playfully taunt those that tried to end it. His intentions, while dangerous, was to reassure the fans that he was in good spirits and still the person they supported and loved. I do that for the fans, you see what I'm saying? Just to keep them alive and, uh, you know, motivated to the point where, uh, you know, Slim ain't, he ain't changed, you feel me? 
Slim 400 would spend the next 15 days learning how to walk again and functioning before he was able to be released from the hospital. Within the 11th to the 12th day, I started kind of like, you know, on that level, you know, you got the rail. Right, right. So I'm walking by myself, but holding the rail against the wall, slowly for surely. And they gave me a little cane to walk on. Then I had a little crutch. Right. And eventually I put the crutch down. I don't yeah. need the cane no more. Yeah, you walked in here. I was kind of like putting on for him. Yeah. I was trying to get out. But right, right. Given how grave his injuries were, it's a miracle he was strong enough to recover to that extent to be released. But the healing had to continue, and the scars were a visible reminder of the second chance at his life he had. Slim 400's ordeal gave him a new lease on life. Recounting the memories of his daughter, seeing him on the hospital bed, he knew he had to do better, since the second chance he prayed for came true. I, I, I would do right, bro. Like, yeah. I would do right, man. I can't. I ain't gonna be in the streets no more. I ain't gonna be doing the dumb stuff I was doing. Just, just give me another chance to show you I can do better. I can't keep. I can't keep putting it through this. You see what I'm saying? So. I gotta do better as a dad, you feel me? I gotta watch my behind as a dad and know it's the reason for me being here. He didn't want her to have to follow the same path he did, but wanted her to do better, be better, to pursue her dreams, appreciate life, and even further herself at college. Sim 400 knew what he endured and what came with the lifestyle he was living, but coming so close to his assassination, his mindset was like that of a new man and a better father. Every day a blessing, you know what I mean? Wake up praying, going about your day and go get it. How are you about to go get your bag? I'm gonna make sure her bag good, stay at school, college, whatever she needed. His attackers failed. This was the second time he was shot. Stem 400's altercations were increasing in danger, from two shots to nine. But he vowed that it would never happen again. You've been shot 11 times. Uh, that's to me, two different occasions. Two different occasions. One, nine two. times. This, the last one, nine. Ain't going to be no more. Sadly, Slim 400 would find himself before the barrel of a gun a third time. And this time, it would be fatal. 8 p.m., December 8th, 2021. Vincent Caron, known as rapper Slim 400, was situated in a driveway in his car in the 8600 block of South 7th Avenue in the city of Inglewood, when an assailant snuck up and opened fire on the rapper. Officers patrolling a nearby neighborhood heard gunshots, and upon arriving at the scene, found Slim 400 on the ground, suffering from gunshot wounds. Surveillance footage would capture the chilling shooting, showing the assailant walking up to an unsuspecting Slim 400. The assailant would brandish a firearm, and what sounded like a brief argument ensued before he opened fire, causing Slim 400 to dive onto the ground where he began fighting for his life as the assailant continued pulling the trigger, sending bullets into his flesh. Even then, Slim 400 was hanging on to his attacker and actively trying to fend him off. From the amount of close-range fire that Slim 400 took, it was a miracle he was even still breathing when the officers found him. He fought and survived the impossible before, so maybe this time he could do it again. Slim 400 was treated by paramedics on the scene before being rushed to the hospital. But unfortunately, this time, his injuries were too great, and he passed away. They located a male black on the ground suffering from gunshot wounds. He was treated by paramedics and taken to a local hospital. Many like his friend, BG Knockout, would be saddened by his assassination, recalling hearing rumors of issues Slim 400 was involved in that may have been the cause as to why his life was targeted man like I, I kept hearing his name and a bunch of things man especially after being shot i was just like damn i, I was hoping that he would have changed the trajectory of you know the way he was moving but it was a huge loss for the city of la but the loss would soon multiply law officials grew on edge because in their minds the possibility of retaliation was only a matter of time away also they have video now of uh, the crime being committed. But what they're on edge about is that they, they fear that this is going to be retaliation. Uh, yeah. A series of retali retaliatory moves by gangs. Uh. Stim 400 was a documented gang member of the Blood Gang faction. I say, um, I start really being affiliated, you know, with a gang about like, like 13, 14. In fact, 
When he was shot at 19, he recalls being in a burgundy colored vehicle, which symbolized the red moniker of the Bloods, riding through a Crip gang territory, and that made him a target. I feel I was in a Crip neighborhood, and they kind of knew of me. My car burgundy. Friday night, they must have been hanging and see me and felt like, oh, we don't get this. So they did what they did. It was also known to police there was a growing gang rivalry between the Inglewood family gangster blood gang, aka IFGB, and the Rolling 60 Crip in the region. With Slim 400 being affiliated with the Bloods, the rumored connection swirled around that the Crips were responsible for his assassination. This was a serious allegation that would act like gasoline to an already blazing feud. Realizing how detrimental this could become, gang interventionists and community activists Skip Townsend, who was a part of the Los Angeles Gang Reduction Youth Development and founder and CEO of Second Call, a crime reduction and reentry organization serving the greater Los Angeles area, made calls through his connections and went public to dispel the rumors that the Crips were responsible for Slim 400's assassination. 60s did not. 60s did not. Slim 400. Even with trying hard to extinguish the flames, retaliations had already taken the lives of the Crips in the region. The question was plaguing everyone's mind. If it wasn't the Rolling 60 Crips who were responsible, like the rumors were speculating, then who was the perpetrator or the perpetrators of the crime? The answer would eventually arrive when two suspects were apprehended in connection with his assassination. On June 9, 2022, 33-year-old Michael Lynn Terry, aka Tiny Doughboy of Los Angeles, and 42-year-old Tamara Lynn Bell of Inglewood were taken into custody and booked into Inglewood City Jail. Records show that Michael Terry was no stranger to the law reports that he had prior convictions in 2017 and possession of a firearm by a felon in 2019. Due to the inclusion of his already serious background with criminal activities, he was charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm for that hit. His bail was set at $3,025,000, while Bell was charged with accessory after the fact with her bail set at $1 million. A man in a woman was arrested and charged with the slaying of rapper Vincent Coran. firearm, while Tamra Bell is charged with being an accessory after the fact. To date, the case is still ongoing. Hopefully justice will be served. Slim 400 came up through all the crime to rise to hip-hop stardom after being born in Germany and moving to LA, where he was raised in Compton. So, you were actually born in Germany? Yes. His music career excelled after his dedication to using his life experiences to create authentic music painting the reality of those in the street. His talent was recognized by the masses and brought him into contact with mainstream rappers like YG and super producers like DJ Mustard. He continued his goals to elevate further in the music industry, founding his label under Ice Water under Empire. He was building a legacy that would have not only impacted the music industry for a lifetime, but would have changed the lives of many upcoming artists that would have been signed to his growing label. Again, the streets have taken another rapper from the music industry, another dear soul from his loved ones, another father away from his daughter. Rest in peace, Slim 400.